But we begin tonight with a tale of two campaigns. On Thursday, President Joe Biden was joined by two of his Democratic predecessors for a star-studded fundraiser at Radio City Music Hall that his campaign said brought in more than $26 million. Former Presidents Barack Obama and Bill Clinton joined Biden on stage with Mindy Kaling hosting and Stephen Colbert moderating the conversation. It was a huge night, historic. And Hollywood showed up for the Democratic contender, which must have really gotten under Donald Trump's skin. Trump couldn't hack it in Hollywood, and he hates that Hollywood loves the Democrats, but especially Barack Obama. Last night, there were actual celebrities showing up for Joe Biden instead of the fake D-listers who show up for Donald Trump, people like Vanilla Ice, who performed Ice Ice Baby at Mar-a-Lago New Year's Eve, at a, at a Mar-a-Lago New Year's Eve bash with a teenage mutant ninja turtle. Now, if that sounds like a 90s fever dream, it's because it is. Another one of Trump's fake celebs is Kid, what is his name? The guy on the left, the one on the left, the, ones who, the one who once threw shade at Beyonce saying she didn't have a legendary song, that one. Well, he learned his lesson when the beehive stung back. More on Beyonce later in the show, but I digress. So the Hollywood thing creates quite the contrast with Trump, right? But there was another important contrast as well. At last night's event, protesters heckled Biden over his policy in Gaza. Now, listen, Biden has faced protests before. OK, this is now just a part of his life as a person campaigning for reelection, but with policies during his administration that part of his base deeply opposes. But you'll notice that he didn't respond with threats or rage, rather with compassion. Here's how he responded to pro-Palestinian protesters who interrupted his health care speech on Tuesday. My coverage. Everybody deserves health care. They have a point. We need to get a lot more care into the Gaza. Be patient with them, he said. They have a point, he said. And last night, when he was heckled over Gaza, he said, that's all right, let them go. While his former boss, Barack Obama, added that it is possible to have moral clarity and have deeply held beliefs, but still recognize that the world is complicated. Quite the contrast from the other guy who opts for a more, shall we say, toxic tone when anyone dares to protest him. Look at these people. Get out of here. Get out. Out, out, out. You know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. If you see somebody getting ready to throw a tomato, knock the crap out of them, would you? Seriously. Okay. Just knock the hell. I promise you, I will pay for the legal fees. I promise. But like any bully who hides behind a pulpit, the reality is that Donald Trump is a physical coward. He just really likes goading other people to get violent on his behalf. He ruminates on people getting shot. He sent his supporters to sack the Capitol and seemed totally fine with Mike Pence getting hanged. Cassidy Hutchinson even said Trump thought he deserved it. And now he's facing the biggest threat he's ever faced in the form of criminal trials. But the only one that he can't seem to get rid of before the election is his upcoming New York hush money criminal trial. Less than 24 hours after getting hit with a partial gag order in that New York criminal case involving his alleged falsification of business records, Trump repeatedly lashed out at the one person who's not covered by the partial gag order, the judge. And so it begins, or rather never ends with Donald Trump going after the New York judge, Juan Marchand, along with his daughter, accusing her of sharing a photo of Trump behind bars on social media. Court officials quickly knocked that down, saying the account on X Twitter is bogus. Well, too late. The damage is done. This young woman's name is out there. Trump's most fanatical supporters will target her. And that's what he wants, right? Maybe that will slow this trial down. We have seen this story play out before. Governor George Wallace created an atmosphere of fear with hateful rhetoric inciting violence throughout the South. 
while the 1924 Democratic National Convention held at Madison Square Garden in New York had fistfights in the aisle, as well as a presidential candidate who banked on support from the Ku Klux Klan. Political violence is woven into America's history. None of this is new. And that is perhaps the reason why we understand what Trump's words are capable of. Trump is doing what he always does, making threats, calling out his so-called enemies and their loved ones, and unleashing the MAGA mob on innocent lives. He knows these dark forces will lead to violence. Anyone who witnessed January 6th knows he is leading a cult of followers. He understands that he's leading a cult of followers. Any other human being would face legal consequences for this stuff, but so far, Trump has not. The situation is so dire that a Republican-appointed judge issued a rebuke on CNN, which is extremely rare for a sitting judge to do, saying Trump's attacks could lead to violence. It's very disconcerting uh, to have someone uh, uh, making uh, comments about a judge, and it's particularly problematic when uh, those comments uh, are in the form of a threat, especially if they're directed at one's family. I mean, we do these jobs because we're committed to the rule of law and we believe in the rule of law, and the rule of law can only function effectively uh, when we have judges who are prepared to carry out their duties without the threat uh, of potential uh, physical harm. We should also note that late today, Trump's attorneys filed a motion challenging the gag order. The district attorney has also asked Judge Marchand to clarify or confirm whether the gag order applies to family members. Joining me now is Michael Cohen, former Trump attorney and a key witness in Trump's upcoming hush money trial. He is the host of the Mia Culpa podcast, the co-host of the Political Beatdown podcast, and the author of Revenge, how Donald Trump weaponized the U.S. Department of Justice against his critics. Very apropos. Michael, it's always good to talk with you. I want to let you real quick listen just to a non-exhaustive uh, sort of roundtable of Donald Trump att attacking judges, prosecutors, and their families. Take a listen. I've been treated very unfairly by this judge. Now, this judge is of Mexican heritage. I'm building a wall, okay? I'm building a wall. The Trump-hating prosecutor in the case, he's, uh, his wife and family despise me much more than he does, and he decides, I think he's about a 10. They're about a 15 on a scale of 10. Then you have deranged Jack Smith, who's a Trump hater and represents all the Trump haters. You have a radical left attorney general like Letitia James, who's a disgrace to our country. The judges on these cases, they're all Trump haters. Michael, what's his goal when he does that? His goal is to... Um, fuel up his supporters, as you stated in your opening, you know, to fuel up his haters for the sole purpose of getting them to act no differently and as stupidly as they did on January 6th. His goal is to get them to attack these individuals, these critics of him, um, as often and as frequently as they possibly can, whether it's going to be on social media, whether it'll be through phone calls, whether it'll be in person. I mean, that's his goal. Intimidation you, and witness. It's witness intimidation and it's harassment. Yeah. I mean, you went from working for Donald Trump for 10 years to being on the other side of him. You were, uh, you know, very ostentatiously returned to, to prison because you wouldn't stop writing a book about him. Talk about what happens when he targets you, because you're now a witness against him in this criminal trial that he can't seem to stop. Well, just the other day, uh, two hours before the signing of this gag order, which I believe that I'm included in, he put out a tweet that had my name, and it's a little bit incoherent, which is something that Donald's uh, posts have recently been. But it was an incoherent thing that talked about me and death. Um, what is his goal? Again, it's to incite these followers within which to prevent me from uh, appearing before the New York um, district attorney before the Manhattan district attorney in this upcoming trial. He does not want to face accountability at any cost. And just to be conf just to be clear, you know, Donald Trump, is he doing this because he's scared because he knows that if this trial happens, he could be he could lose. He could be an adjudicated felon. And that will mean he can't get back into the White House and stop the other cases. Well, look, let me, let me be clear about something. First of all, there is no constitutional prohibition for a felon 
being the president of the United States and running it out of Damn. a federal correctional institution. Sure. All right. There is no constitutional prohibition against that. Uh, is Donald afraid of this upcoming Manhattan DA case, the Alvin Bragg case? Absolutely. It's not even scared. It's petrified. He has seen right now losses in every single case that he has been on uh, over the last, was it, two, three years. It's whether it's the E. Jean Carroll cases or the New York Attorney General case. He knows the documentation that exists. And the only way, the only method that they think that they have to keep him out of a criminal conviction in this case is to try to disparage, denigrate, harass, intimidate me, either so that I don't show up. And let me be clear about something, too, Joy. I've said this on other programs. I didn't ask to be a witness in this case. I'm subpoenaed. But, you know, things are getting a little bit out of control. The amount of death threats that I've gotten after the post that he put out there, the hate on social media that I'm receiving from his supporters is intensified after that tweet as well or that post. Uh, this is not a joke. He knows what he's doing. And I think it's incumbent upon the Manhattan DA, along with whatever Judge Mershon is capable of doing, um, to do something to protect not just staff, not just his own child, but all of the witnesses that are being asked to testify. This is their case. It's not my case. It's not Stormy Daniels or Karen McDougal or any of the other people that are supposed to be testifying. Um, it is incumbent upon them to protect all of the witnesses. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.